this day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand the tiptoe when the day is named. And rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the visual feast his neighbors. And say tomorrow is Saint Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, these wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot. But he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names familiar in his mouth as household words. Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester. Be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son. And Crisp and Crispian shall ne'er go by, from this day till the ending of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today who sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gender his condition. And gentlemen in England now. Our bed shall think themselves a curse. Hold their manhood's cheap, whilst any speaks. Up thought upon St. Crispin's day. 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 Welcome to Speak the Speech 2020. My name is Christopher Commander. I'm Sarah Wendy Berman. And in this time of virtual theatre. And education. And education. We bring you these fantastic students who have spent a four week intensive with us. We've spent time with crazy kings. Rebellious ruffians. And lion hearted leaders. We've taken our fearless students through Shakespeare's history plays from through the Henriad and all the way up to the Hunchbacked Richard III. At this time, we are proud to introduce to you a selection of scenes from the characters we've spent the past four weeks with, performed by our company of actors from around the globe. Starting our showcase off with Richard II, come with us on a journey through Shakespeare's histories as we present to you Speak the Speech. No matter where, of comfort, no man speak. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. And yet not so, for what can we bequeath? Save our deposed bodies to the ground? Our lands our lives, and all our Bolingbrokes. And nothing can we call our own but death. And that small model of the barren earth, which served as pace and cover to our bones. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts that they have deposed some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping killed, all murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king, keeps death his court, and there the antic sits, scoffing his state and grinning at his pomp. Cover your heads and mock not flesh and blood with some reverence, throw away respect, form, tradition, and ceremonious duty. For you have but mistook me all this while. As if it's bread, like you. Feel want, taste grief, need friends, subject thus. How can you say to me, I am a king?
I have been studying how I may compare this prison where I live unto the world. And for because the world is populous and here is not a creature but myself, I cannot do it. Yet I'll hammer it out. My brain I'll prove the female to my soul, my soul the father. And these two beget a generation of still breeding thoughts. And these same thoughts people this little world in humors like the people of this world, for no thought is contented. The better sort, as thoughts of things divine, are intermixed with scruples and do set the word itself against the word. Thoughts tending to ambition plot unlikely wonders. How these vain, weak nails may tear a passage through the flinty ribs of this hard world, my ragged prison walls, and for they cannot die in their own pride. Tending to content, flatter themselves that they are not the first of fortune slaves, nor shall not be the last. And in this thought kind of ease, bearing their own misfortune on the back of such as have before endured the like. Thus play I in one many people, not contented sometimes, then treasons make me wish myself a beggar, then crush persuades me I was better when a king. Then am I kinged again, and by and by think that I am unkinged by Bolingbroke, and straight am nothing. Music do I hear? <laughs> Keep time. How sour sweet music is. Time is broken, no proportion kept. So is it in the music of men's lives. I wasted time, and now doth time waste me. This music mads me! Let it no more! For though to hope mad men to their wits, in me it seems it will make wise men mad. Yet, blessing on his heart that gives it me, for tis a sign of love. And love to Richard is a strange brooch in this all-hating world. For you, my lord. What sayest thou, my lady? Where's it carried away? Why, my horse, my lady, my horse. I'm so mad at ape. A weasel has not such a deal of spleen as your toss with in the face. I'll know your business here, that I will. I fear my boy Motomo does stir up on his title and has him for you to line his empires. But if you go. So far afoot, I shall be weary, love. Come, come, you parakeeta. Ask me, dragon, unto the question that I ask. Oh, wait. I'll break that out of finger, Harry. You will not tell me all these true. Away. Away, you trifler. Love. <laughs> I love thee not. I care not for thee, Kate. This is no world to play with mammoths and to tilt with lips. Why, we must have bloody noses and cracked crowns. And to pass them current too. God's me. My horse. What? Sayest thou, my lady? What wouldst thou have with me, Kate? Do you not love me? Do you not indeed? Well, do not sin. But since you love me not, I would not love myself. Do you not love me? Nay, tell me if you speak in jest or no. Come. Will thou see me ride? And, and when I am on horseback, I shall swear I love thee infinitely. But, hark you, Kate, 
I cannot have you henceforth question whither I go, nor question whereabout. Whither I must, I must, and to conclude, this evening must I leave you. Gentle Kate, I know you wise, but yet not so far the wiser than Harry Percy's wife. Constant, you are, but yet a woman. And for secrecy, no lady closer. For I will believe that thou wilt not utter what thou dost not know. And so far will I trust thee, gentle Kate. How? So far? Not an inch further! But hark you, Kate. Whither shall I go? Thither shall you go too. Today will I go forth. Tomorrow, you. Will this content you, Kate? The mother first. Why, thou owest God a death. Tis not due yet, and I would be loath to pay him before his day. What need I be so forward with him that calls not on me? Well, tis no matter, honor pricks me on. Yea, but how if honor prick me off when I come on? How then? Can honor set to a leg? No. Or an arm? No. Or take away the grief of a wound? No. Honor hath no skill in surgery then? No. What is honor? A word. What is in that word, honor? What is that, honor? Air, a trim reckoning. Who hath it? He that died a Wednesday. Doth he feel it? No. Doth he hear it? No. Tis insensible then, yea, to the dead. But will it not live with the living? No. Why? Detraction will not suffer it, therefore I'll have none of it. Honor is a mere scutcheon, and so ends my catechism. Why doth the crown lie there upon his pillow, being so troublesome a bedfellow? This sleep is sound indeed, this is a sleep that from this golden wriggle hath divorced so many English kings. Thy due for me is tears and heavy sorrows of the blood, which nature, love, and filial tenderness shall, O oh dear father, pay thee plenteously. My due from thee is this imperial crown, which God shall guard and put the world's whole strength into one giant arm. It shall not force this lineal honor from me. Where is the crown? Who, who took it from my pillow? I never thought to hear you speak again. Thy wish was father, Harry, to that thought. I stay too long by thee, I weary thee. Dost thou so hunger for my empty chair, that thou mightst invest thee with my honors before that hour be ripe? O oh, foolish youth! Thou mightst seekest the greatness that will overwhelm thee. What? Canst thou not forbear me half an hour? Then get thee gone and dig my grave thyself, and bid the merry bells ring to thine ear, that thou art crowned, not that I am dead. Oh, my poor kingdom, sick with civil blows, when that my care could not withhold thy riots, what wilt thou do in riots is thy care? Oh, Oh, that will be a wilderness again, peopled with wolves, thy old inhabitants. Oh, pardon me, my liege. God witness with me, when I here came in and found no course of breath within your majesty, how cold it struck my heart. Coming to look on you, thinking you dead, I spake unto this crown as having sense, and thus abraded it. 
the cow and the depending hath fed upon the body of my father. Therefore, thou best of gold art worst of gold. Other less fine in carrot is more precious, preserving life and medicine potable. But thou, most fine, most honored, most renowned, hast eat thy bearer up. Thus, my most royal liege, accusing it, I put it on my head to try with it as with an enemy that had before my face murdered my father. But if it did infect my blood with joy or swell my thoughts to any strain of pride, let God forever keep it from my head and make me as the poorest vassal is that doth with awe and terror kneel to it. Oh, my son, God put it in thy mind to take it hence. Thou mightst win the more thy father's love, pleading so wisely and accuse of it. Come hither, Harry. Sit thou by my bed and hear, I think, the very latest counsel that ever I shall breathe. God knows, my son, by what bypass and indirect crooked ways I met this crown. And I myself know well how troublesome is sat upon my head. To thee it shall descend with better quiet, better opinion, better confirmation. Yet thou stands more sure than I could, that thou art not firm enough. Therefore, my Harry, be it to thy course to busy giddy minds with foreign quarrels. That action hence borne out may waste away the memory of the former days. More would I, but my lungs are wasted so that strength of speech is utterly denied me. How I can buy the crown? Oh, God, forgive. And granting me with thee, and true peace live. I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. How ill white hairs become a fool and jester. I have long dreamt of such a kind of man. So surfeit, swelled, so old, and so profane. But being awake, I do despise my dream. Make less thy body hence, and more thy grace. Leave gormandizing. Know the grave doth gape for thee, thrice wider than for other men. Reply not to me with a full-born jest. Presume not that I am the thing I was. For God doth know, so shall the world perceive, that I have turned away my former self. And so will I those that have kept me company. When thou dost hear that I am as I have been, approach me and thou shalt be as thou was, the tutor and the feeder of my riots. Until then I banish thee on pain of death as I have done the rest of my misleaders, not to come near our person by ten mile. For competence of life I will allow you, that lack of means and force you not to evil. When we do hear you do reform yourselves, we will, according to your strengths and qualities, give you advancement. Be it your charge, my lord, to see perform the tenor of our word, set on. Oh, let us on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within these walls are not two mighty monarchies. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth. For it is your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping or times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass, with which should ply, admit me chorus to this history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. The region conquers and the Frenchmen fly. Now help, 
in charming spells, in periacts, and ye choice spirits that admonish me and give me signs of future accidents, you speedy helpers that are substitutes under the lordly monarch of the north, appear and aid me in this enterprise. This speedy and quick appearance argues proof of your accustomed diligence to me. Now, ye familiar spirits, who are called out of the powerful regions under earth, help me this once, that France may get the field. Oh, hold me not with silence over long, where I was wont to feed you with my blood, I'll lop a member off and give it to an earnest of fruit of benefit, so you do condescend to help me now. No, all to have to redress. My body shall pay recompense if you will grant my suit. Cannot my body nor blood sacrifice and treat you to your wanted furtherance? Then take my soul! My body, soul, and all before that England give the French the foil. See, they forsake me. Now, the time has come that France must veil her lofty plumed crest and let her head fall into England's lap. My ancient incantations are too weak and hell too strong for me to walk away. Now, France, thy glory droopeth to the dust. Here comes the queen, whose looks bewray her anger. I'll steal away. Nay, go not from me. I will me? follow thee. Be patient, gentle queen, and I shall stay. Who can be patient in such extremes? Ah, wretched man. Would I had died a maid and never seen thee, never born thee son. Seeing thou hast proved so unnatural a father, uh, has he deserved to lose his birthright thus? Hadst thou but loved him half so well as I, or felt that pain which I did for him once, or nourished him as I did with my blood, Thou wouldst have left thy dearest heart blood there, rather than have that savage duke thine heir, and disinherited thy only son. Pardon, pardon me, Margaret, pardon me, sweet son. The, the Earl of Warwick and the Duke enforced me. Enforced thee. Art thou king, and wilt be forced? I shame to hear thee speak. Ah, timorous wretch, thou hast undone thyself, my son, and me, and given unto the house of York such head as thou shalt reign, but by their sufferance to entail him and his heirs unto the crown. What is it but to make thy sepulchre and creep into it far before thy time? Had I been there, which am a silly woman, the soldier should have Toss me on their pikes before I would have granted to that act. But thou, 
preferest thy life before thine honor. And seeing thou dust, I hear divorce myself both from thy table, Henry, and thy bed until that act of parliament be repealed whereby my son is disinherited. That's where I leave thee. Come, son, let's away. Our army is ready. Come, we'll after them. Stay, gentle Margaret, and hear me speak. Thou hast spoke too much already. Get thee gone. Gentle son Edward, thou wilt stay with me? I, to be murdered by his enemies. Come, son, away. We may not linger thus. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that roared upon our house are in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. And now our brows are bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments. Our stern alarms change to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now instead of mounting barbered steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious playing of a lute. But I, that are not shaped for such sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I, that am rudely stamped, and what loves majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by disassembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up and so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hope by them. Why I in this piping time of peace have no delight to pass away the time unless to see my shadow in the sun and discant on my own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and to hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plot, Evelyn. Inductions dangerous. By drunken prophecies, libels, dreams. To set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am, subtle false and treacherous, then this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy that says G of Edward's heirs, the murderer shall be. Set down, set down thy honorable load whilst I lament virtuous Lancaster. Poor key cold figure of a holy king. Oh, hear the lamentations of poor Anne, wife to thy Edward, to thy slaughtered son, stabbed by the selfsame hand that made these wounds. Oh, cursed, 
be the hand that made these holes. Cursed the heart that had the heart to do it. Cursed the blood that let this blood from hence. If ever he have wife, let her be made more miserable by the death of him as I am made by my poor lord and thee. Stay, you that bear the corpse and set it down. What black magician conjures up this fiend? Avaunt, thou dreadful minister of hell. Sweet saint, for charity be not so cursed. Let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. I shall not grant excuses to the thing that killed my husband and my king. I did not kill your husband. Why, then he is alive. Nay, he is dead, and slain by Edward's hands. In thy foul throat, thou liest! <laughs> Queen Margaret saw thy murderous dagger smoking in his blood. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Dost grant me, hedgehog? Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. And thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else, if you hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. Is not the causer of the timeless deaths as blameful as the executioner? Thou art the cause, and most accursed effect. Your beauty was the cause of that effect. Your beauty, which did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world, so that I may live one hour in your sweet bosom. If I thought that, I tell thee homicide. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth thee. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Where is he? Here. Why dost thou spit at me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fouler toad. Out of my sight thou dost infect mine eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Those eyes of thine for mine have drawn salt tears. Teach not thy lips such scorn, for they are made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. If thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, I humbly beg for death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Henry, but twas thy beauty that provoked me. Nay, now dispatch, twas I that stabbed young Edward. Twas thy heavenly face that set me on. Take up the sword again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler, though I wish thy death, I will not be the executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. Well, well, put down your sword. Say then, my peace is made. That thou shalt know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope, live so. Vouchsafe to wear this ring. To take is not to give. Look how this ring encompassed finger. Even so, thy breast encloseth my poor heart. Wear both of them, for both of them are thine, that it may please you presently repair to Crosby House, where, after I have solemnly interred this noble king and wet his grave with my repentant tears, I will with all expedient duty see you. Much it joys me to see you are so penitent. Bid me farewell. Tis more than you deserve. But since you teach me how to flatter you, imagine I have said farewell already. Was ever woman in this humor wooed? Was ever woman in this humor won? I'll have her, but I will not keep her long. What? I that killed her husband and his father to take her in her heart's extremest hate with curses in her mouth, tears in her eyes, and yet, to win her, all the world to nothing. Shine out, fair sun, till I have bought a glass, that I may see my shadow as I pass. I can no longer hold me patient. Hear me, you wrangling pirates, that fall out in sharing that which you have killed from me. 
Which of you trembles not that looks on me? Ah, gentle villain, do not turn away. A wrinkled wish. What makest thou in my sight? A husband and a son thou owest me, and thou a kingdom. All of you, allegiance. The sorrow that I have by right is yours, and all of the pleasures you usurp are mine. Give way, dull clouds, to my quick curses. What? Were you snarling all before I came, ready to catch each other by the throat? Die your king, as mine by murder did make him king. Edward thy son, that is now Prince of Wales. For Edward our son, that was Prince of Wales, die in his youth by untimely violence. Thyself a queen, for me that was a queen, outlive thy glory like my wretched self. Long mayest thou live to wail thy children's death, and see another as I see thee now. Decked in thy rights, as thou art stalled in mine, long die thy happy days for thy death. And after many lengthened hours of grief, die neither wife, mother, nor England's queen. Thy charm, thou hateful, withered hag. And <laughs> leave out thee. Stay, dog, for thou shalt hear me. If heaven have any grievous plague in store, O oh, let them be hurled upon thee, troubler of the poor world's peace. No sleep close up the deadly eye of thine, unless it be whilst some tormenting dream affrights thee with a hell of ugly devils. Thou deformed, abortive, rooting hog, the slave of nature and the son of hell. Margaret. Richard. Ha! I call thee not. I cry thee mercy then, for I did think thou was called me all these bitter names. I did, but looked for no reply. Oh, let me make the period to my curse. Tis done by me, and ends in Margaret. Margaret, thus have you breathed your curse against yourself. Poor painted queen, vain flourish of my fortune. The day will come when thou shalt wish for me to help thee curse that poisonous, bunch-backed toad. Urge neither charity nor shame. My charity is outrage, life, my shame, and in that shame still lives my sorrow's rage. Have done, have done. O Buckingham, take heed of yonder dog. Look when he fawns, he bites, and when he bites, his venom's tooth will rankle to the death. Have not to do with him. Beware of him. What doth she say, my lord of Buckingham? Nothing that I respect, my gracious lord. What? Dost thou scorn me for my gentle counsel, and soothe the devil that I warn thee from? Oh, but remember this another day, when he shall split thy very heart with sorrow, and say, Poor Margaret was a prophetess. That does grieve me off. Live each of you as subjects to his hate, and he to yours, and all of you, to God's. So now prosperity begins to mellow and drop into the rotten mouth of death. Here in these confines slyly I have lurked to watch the waning of mine enemies. Withdraw wretched Margaret. Who comes here? Ah, uh, my young princes. Oh, my tender babes. So many miseries have crazed my voice that my woe-weary tongue is mute and dumb. Oh, who hath any cause to mourn but we? I called thee once, poor shadow, painted queen. Where is thy husband now? Where be thy brother? Where be the thronging troops that followed thee? Oh, thou didst prophesy the time would come that I should wish for thee to help me curse. I had a husband till Richard killed them. You had two sons till Richard killed them. I had a husband too, and thou didst kill him. And thou hadst a Clarence too, and Richard killed him. From forth the kennel of thy womb hath crept a hellhound that doth hunt us all to death. Oh, Henry's wife, witness I wept for thee. Bear with me, I am hungry for revenge. 
Clarence, Rivers, Hastings, Gray, and Anne, untimely smothered in their dusky graves. Yet Richard lives. Cancel his bond of life, dear God. I pray that I may live to say the dog is dead. Teach me how to curse mine enemies. My words are dull. Oh, quicken them with thine. Thy woes will make them sharp and pierce like mine. If so, then be not tongue-tied. Go with me. And in the breath of bitter words, let us smother my damned son, which thy too sweet son smothered. Who intercepts my expedition? Oh, she that might have intercepted thee by strangling thee in her cursed womb. Tell me, thou villain slave, where are my children? Thou toad, where is thy brother, Clarence? Where is kind Hastings, Rivers, Grey? Strike drums! Let not the heavens hear these tell-tale women. Hear me a word, for I shall never speak to thee again. Thou camest on earth to make earth my hell. Therefore, take with thee my most grievous curse. In the day of battle, my prayers on the adverse party fight, promising them success and victory. Bloody thou art, bloody will be thy end. I say amen to all. Stay, madam. I must speak a word with you. I have no more sons of the royal blood for thee to murder. You have a daughter called Elizabeth, virtuous and fair, royal and gracious. And must she die for this? Oh, let her live. I will confess she was not Edward's daughter. Madam, from my soul, I love thy daughter, and do intend to make her Queen of England. How canst thou woo her? That I would learn of you. What were I best to say? Her father's brother would be her lord? Or shall I say, her uncle? Or he that slew her brothers and her uncles? Under what title shall I woo for thee? That God, the law, my honor, and her love can make seem pleasing to her tender years. Then plainly tell her my loving tale. Plain and not honest is too harsh a style. Your reasons are too shallow and too quick. Oh no, my reasons are too dead and deep. Poor infants in their graves. I swear. Swear by something thou hast not wronged. By myself. Thyself is self misused. Uh, now by the world. Tis full of thou foul wrongs. Why then by heaven? Heaven's wrong is most of all. What canst thy swear by now? Myself and heaven, God and fortune, bar me happy hours. If with dear heart's love and holy thoughts, I tender not thy beauteous daughter. In her consists my happiness and thine. Without her follows death, desolation, ruin and decay. It cannot and will not be avoided but by this. I did take the kingdom from your sons. To make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. Therefore, dear mother, I must call you so. Plead what I will, not what I have been. Yet thou didst kill my children. But in your daughter's womb I bury them. There they shall breed to your renewed happiness. Shall I be tempted of the devil thus? Aye if the devil tempt thee to do good. I go. Write to me very shortly, and you will understand from me her mind. Bear her my true love's kiss. And so farewell. <laughs> Relenting fool and shallow changing woman. Oh, coward conscience, how dost thou afflict me? Is there a murderer here? No. Yes. I am. Then fly. What? From myself? Great reason why.
Lest thy revenge. Huh, what? Myself upon myself? My conscience has a thousand and several tongues, and every tongue brings in a several tale, and every tale condemns me for a villain. I shall despair. There is no creature loves me. And if I die, no soul shall pity me. Nay, wherefore should they, since I myself find in myself no pity to myself? Methought the souls of all that I murdered came to my tent, and every one did threat tomorrow's vengeance on the head of Richard. Bye. 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 Bye.